Welcome to the 10th Annual NEN Awards. And if you had told me 10 years ago I'd say that, I'd say, wow, you know, that, that'd be quite an accomplishment to do 10 years. And if you told me I'd be wearing glasses, I'd be even more shocked. So that's how bad it is, right? Um, so thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight to the NEN Awards. As you know, this is our annual celebration where we really take the time to thank the people that do the work that, you know, maybe doesn't end up in the news every day or being lauded as being important or essential to the success of the city. But I would argue without it, we wouldn't have a city. So give your all, all of you a big round of applause because everyone here I know is working hard to make it a great place to live. So as you know, we've, uh, we, we try and mix it up a little bit every year and do something you know, different. So this year, we actually rented lights. So look at the beautiful uh, colored uh, room tonight. It was a big, big lift for us to say, we're going to put color in the room. So, but we also want to take a minute and share a little bit about, you know, specifically about the NEN Awards and about the NEN itself and all the things we accomplished before we jump into the, the larger ceremony. So um, it's important to note, I think, that normally at this time, there'd be a really happy, smiling gentleman next to me uh, named Ed Lee, who actually was the one who came up with the idea for this award ceremony. And I think anyone who knows me knows that he was a really special person in my life. And the reason why is because he really helped me find my North Star um, in regards to what I thought I could do with the short time I have um, giving back to my city. And so as Ed always, often used to say when we started this ceremony, that Daniel and I, in 2007, went back to the future, to New Orleans. And I just want to take a minute and use the time he would usually talk about that trip and help you really understand what that meant. And so when we went to New Orleans, we, uh, we basically drove around the city and saw something I don't think any resident wanted to see in their hometown. And that was a level of devastation that... I think was unprecedented in American history, uh, just because of the sheer magnitude and intensity of it. And here's a picture of Mayor Lee standing in the Ninth Ward, looking around what the devastation, and he turned to me and he said, Daniel, this wasn't a natural disaster, this was a social justice disaster. And, I, and if anyone who knows Ed Lee would say, that they wouldn't be surprised at all that that's how he saw what happened there. And we turned and we said, well, well, who's here? Who can we work with? And so we engaged an amazing organization called the Broadmoor Improvement Association, which had stood up and said, in the face of the city saying, we were in a bulldozer neighborhood, they said, no, you're not. We're going to rebuild our neighborhood with or without you. And here, of course, mayor, the mayor with this great smile is hugging Latoya Cantrell, who was a neighborhood leader who basically said, if I don't do this, no one will. Does anyone know what LaToya Cantrell is doing today? She's the mayor of New Orleans. The, the first African-American female mayor of the city. Pretty amazing accomplishment. And the bottom line is, is the mayor, as we all know, he's about getting stuff done as he used to lecture me on the podium here, Daniel talks, I get stuff done. So he said, what can we do to make a difference in this city? And we found out that the local school had been destroyed in the hurricane, and that there was gonna be an RFP to rebuild three schools in New Orleans, and that you had to apply to be part of those three schools, and there were dozens of schools destroyed. So Ed said, you know what we're gonna do? I'm gonna go back to San Francisco and tell every contractor that we spend millions of dollars with building all this great stuff and say, I want you to volunteer and help write that application to rebuild that school. And that's gonna be how San Francisco is gonna give back to the Broadmoor neighborhood. So take a look at what we saw and what we left behind after that process. So here's the building that we approached the day of the event. Here it is today. It is the only LEED Platinum certified building uh, elementary school in New Orleans. Here's the hallways that we saw when we joined them. Look at them today. Bamboo floors, LED lighting. 
And then this is the image that I think for all of us is really what it's all about, is these children that born in that neighborhood got to stay in that neighborhood because that school was reopened. So today, if you want to think about the legacy of Ed Lee, a lot of people in San Francisco know what he did for this city, but you know what? There are going to be generations of children in that neighborhood that will one day find out that this guy, born and raised in Seattle, came to San Francisco fighting for the vulnerable, fighting for the disenfranchised, said, you know what? I got a big job, but I got room in my heart for you. And I just want to close on that tonight. I'm sorry. This is a great guy. So with that, I know he's watching us right now. So he's like, shut up and tell them what you are doing for San Francisco. So who here went to a neighbor fest this year or heard about the neighbor fest program, right? Our big new program in San Francisco about bringing people together at the block level, building connection and building empowerment. And guess what? It was an amazing year. The first year we did it, we ran eight, then 11. And this year we ran 35 block parties across the city, neighbor fest block parties. Some as, as many as 500 people in attendance. And look at the, look at the footprint, right? We, we, we covered the whole city. And you want to know why? Because people want to connect and they want to meet in San Francisco. So we're really excited about taking that program to the next level this year and making a huge success, hopefully. We also accomplished a major milestone. We brought leaders together from all over the city and asked them if we could create a leadership academy to build stronger neighborhoods. We said, you know, how could we do that and, and give us some ideas and a roadmap. And I'm really honored to say that in partnership with Supervisor Saf Saf uh, Asha Safai and his team, we are now about to launch the first ever NEN Leadership Academy in District 11 with the support of the community. And in the end, it's going to be about the community for the community. And the focus is to demystify how San Francisco works so you can get involved and guide your neighborhood, but also learn how to be a vessel for your community and really help achieve its goals and aspirations. So we're really honored about the opportunity to work with the District 11 community, Coro, and the supervisor's office. And then also I don't want to leave behind the amazing neighborhoods that we work with every day across the city in our, our Empower Communities program. And we're excited to announce that we just got a grant to onboard four more neighborhoods uh, in the city as well. And when we come back next year, we'll share with you more than that. But with that, I think it's time to get going with our first award. And unfortunately, oh, who's that handsome man over there? What do we, who wants to see Joaquin Torres talk? I know I do. Come on up, Joaquin. Thank you so much, Daniel. That's right. And let's bring up our first uh, recipients of the award for the Hall of Fame Award. And the Hall of Fame Award, as you may recall, is the award that we give people that we didn't get a chance to thank while they were here, but now we want to take a moment and honor them in memory. And I yield to my colleague, Joaquin Torres, to introduce them. Thank you so much, Daniel. Um, it's an honor to be here tonight as Deputy Director of the Office of Economic and Workforce Development, uh, investing in our neighborhoods, um, and just recognizing quickly that it's the public, public partnership representatives who are here tonight who make our city so special, who make our neighborhoods thrive, um, and who keep us all on our toes and recommitted every day to the work that we do for San Francisco. Tonight we have with us John Duong and Linda Lighthizer to recognize a very, very long time community activist and advocate. And many of our neighborhoods have been forever changed for the better by fellow San Franciscans who are no longer with us. The NEN Hall of Fame Award acknowledges these leaders and their contributions that continue to positively impact our lives on a daily basis. And their efforts and your efforts are never forgotten. May Ling Wong is one such community leader. And receiving the award on May's behalf is her son John and her good friend Linda. Hello. I'm Linda Lighthizer, and I'm here to represent the many, many friends and colleagues that May had in our neighborhood. I met May over 10 years ago when she showed up at an Excelsior District Improvement Association meeting. And, and she introduced herself, I'm May, the nosy neighbor. From then on, she was everywhere. We were so amazed at this woman's energy and her ability to coalesce 
large amount, numbers of people together to help do volunteer projects. She was particularly fond of McLaren Park because she grew up right across the street from it. And when we, she found out that, we, that many of us were working very hard with the Parks Department, she said, well, I'm going to get involved with that, too. And, and I'm so delighted that General Manager Ginsburg is here. So I'm sure he has a few notes to say about May and her volunteerism. She came to every Rec and Park Commission hearing meeting monthly to make sure that nobody forgot the entire southeast side of San Francisco. She was there to rally for both the Excelsior, the Portland, and Viz Valley, and all the neighborhoods in that area. We are so much in her debt, and we miss her every day. But her spirit lives on in all the projects and things that she worked on. And so many of the people that are here today are her friends and coworkers. And here is her son, John. Thank you so much, Linda. And recognizing, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Is our, mm -hmm. And thank you to our general manager, Phil Ginsburg, and supervisor, Asha Safai. It's an honor to have you with us tonight. And, and John. Um, Linda took a beautiful picture of my mother. Uh, usually when they change street signs, there's a sign with Excelsior, and it points towards her house. So if you're ever in the neighborhood of Excelsior, the nice thing is if you keep on going up the hill towards McLaren Park, you'll see a blue water tower. And as a kid, she used to climb it and claim it as her fortress. So for everybody here, we do want to thank you. Um, and also, if I need to remember my mother, it's a great way to look up in the city and see the Blue Tower, and I still see her around. Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you for that. Why? Get out of here. I'm like, you don't have to hold the microphone for me. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Supervisor Asha Safai. I just wanted to say a, a two quick little things about May. So many wonderful things have been said. She was a dedicated, dedicated, dedicated neighborhood activist and leader. And I, I'll share with you two quick stories. When I decided to run for supervisor, the word started to spread around the neighborhood. And it was on a Friday night, like around 1030, my phone rang. And all of a sudden, it said, May Wong. And I answered the phone, and she said, Asha, this is May. And I said, hey. And she said, I want to tell you two things. She said, you're going to win. And, I was, and this was almost two years before the race. And I said, great. I'm glad you know something that I don't. And she said, but I want you to put your head down and work really, really hard and listen. And then the second time we were out in the community, she would stop me and grab me by the shoulders and said, this is what I need to tell you. You need to focus on a couple of things. One thing, when people are talking to you, Look them directly in the eye. You need to work on that. And I said, okay, May, I'm listening. And she would check in with me throughout the campaign. And by the end, she was like, you're getting better. You're doing really good. You're listening. You're looking people in the eye. So she was someone that really cared. And I know that John said she, she's always dedicated herself to trying to help other people. So I'm going to read you a last little excerpt that she sent to me. And there's a couple of things that I did tonight. If those of you that saw me on a Wednesday, you'll know what I'm talking about by the end of this email. She started giving me feedback and she said, we need a district-wide newsletter to pull together activists and their plan. I know you're having a meeting on Wednesday with some folks in the neighborhood, but I won't be there, but I'm going to give you my thoughts. I suggest that Linda D. work on the newsletter with you. And of course, your office can have some involvement in your newsletter too. You're now supervisor, not an organizer. Wear a suit as often as needed with black shoes, especially when trailing the mayor. She said, we'll be giving you a one-year review on all fronts, not personal, just job performance. And when coming off vacation, shave before showing up at City Hall. Hairy look, not appropriate, just a few random thoughts. So those of you that know me, I often will wear, not wear black shoes, but I wore them tonight for May. And those of you that knew me on Wednesday knew that I had a beard to about here, but I shaved just because of May tonight. So may you rest in peace, May. You're holding the mic for me. All right, so le le based on what Supervisor Safai just said, let me say this, Auntie May, I'm really sorry. I'm not brown wearing shoes brown and shoes and I haven't <laughs> shaved. Um, uh, I, it was very important for me to be here tonight to continue to be able to celebrate her uh, again. 
Uh, she was one of the most special volunteers and advocates that I have ever met. Uh, there was not an event that she did not attend. There was not time she did not give for our parks. Um, she, um, she called me Uncle Phil. She always brought me treats and she always told me what to do. And I listened and our parks are better for it. So thank you, Auntie May. Thank you so much. All right, Daniel, back to you. Wonderful, thank you, yes. Another round of applause, please, to honor the life of May Wong. Yes, bravo. <laughs> Amen. The last time I saw May, you won't be surprised, was right over there, about 30 feet, and she had her finger in Gavin Newsom's face, this was, no, this was literally like a few months ago, it seemed, and was like, you need to work harder to connect with people. You're too slick. <laughs> and Gavin smiled and nodded as he does, and uh, they both separated and there was no violence. So uh, again, a wonderful, wonderful person. I'd like to take a moment now and um, introduce the president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, London Breed, who would have some remarks tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I am so honored to be here tonight. I'm especially honored because as someone who worked hard in the community, I know how much work each and every one of you have done in order to be here. But I also know that you didn't do the work because you wanted to get a reward. And you did the work because you knew it was important to the people in your community. And that's why you're here tonight, to be honored for doing some amazing things. Folks from all over the city, the Lower Polk Neighborhood Association. I see Julie Christensen from the Dog Patch and the work that they're doing. And I'm just so proud of everything that you all do, but I'm especially excited because the person who is receiving the Not Lifetime Achievement Award is somebody that I just absolutely adore. Somebody who I was fortunate enough to work hand in hand in the Western edition. Barbara Wanger, I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. This woman rolled up her sleeves and what's so amazing about the work that she did, she said, I'm not here to try and change the community to make it better. I'm trying to work with the community because we know there are great people here and how do we bring out the best in our young people so that they have an incredible opportunity. She's been consistent, she's been committed, and so she definitely, and she just retired, but she technically hasn't retired because she's still given orders. But she is such an amazing jewel and she so deserves this award, just like all of the honorees that are here tonight. And I just wanted to stop by, welcome all of you to City Hall, but more importantly, to say thank you. Thank you for your resilience. Thank you for your commitment to communities. Thank you for rolling up your sleeves and doing the right thing when no one is looking. Thank you for always being there for people who sometimes don't even understand or know exactly what it means but they eventually will because the beautifulness of what happens in our city when we all come together shines through you because of the example that you create. So thank you all so much for being here this evening and have a wonderful night. Thank you, Supervisor. Excellent. And now we have our, the winners of the next awards, which is the Extraordinary Neighborhood Block Party, as well as the Most Empowering City Employee. Joaquin? So block parties are more than a potluck outdoors. They're an opportunity for neighbors to come together and catch up with old friends and create a few new ones, all while celebrating what they value most, living in a great neighborhood. The Neighborhood Empowerment Network honors this important community building activity with its own award. This past September, LC Street Neighbors hosted its 11th annual LC Street Block Party. Its 11th annual LC Street Block Party. An extraordinary display of community togetherness and sophisticated organization. 
featuring a bake-off contest, of course, a bouncy house, bongra dancers, a live band, barbecue, and a block clear of automobiles. I want to say congratulations to all of you, and thank you to Amy Beinhardt from Supervisor Hillary Ronan's office for being uh, here with us tonight. I know she also has a presentation for you. And uh, Michael, it's great to see you again. We were riding the 14 bus last night, uh, and just we're uh, gibbing and gabbing. Um, uh, but who's going to speak on behalf of the organization tonight? Oh, you do. Uh, Elsie Street neighbors are deeply honored to receive this award. We uh, totally concur with your choice. <laughs> and, um, uh, and, and we want to thank all the various uh, departments. Uh, certainly the Ingleside Station of the Police Department, it's good to see three past and current captains of Ingleside uh, here with us tonight. Also Engine 32 of the Fire Department and ISCOD and the SFMTA. Uh, you are all invited to the 12th annual Elsie Street Block Party, which is taking place Saturday, September 22nd, 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, thank you. Hi, I'm Amy Beinart. I'm legislative aide to Supervisor Hillary Ronan. I just wanted to say that Supervisor Ronan would have loved to be here tonight. Unfortunately, she was not able to, but she sends her love and her congratulations. Um, she totally values the contributions you make to building a strong and vital uh, community. And um, you, you really set the bar high, but uh, we'll, we'll look forward to continued years of extraordinary black parties. Thank you. Thank you so much. Another round of applause, please. Time to exit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> We also have the most empowering city employee of the year. As we said before, it's a public-public partnership, and you need committed people um, uh, working every day on your behalf, on the public's behalf. And so today, um, we're very um, uh, honored uh, to be honoring Michelle Jeffers. We're joined by Luis Herrera, our outgoing city librarian. So tonight, we honor you, Michelle. This award highlights an employee of the city and county of San Francisco who has consistently been a valued asset to community members as they work to build cleaner, greener, healthier, safer, and more economically vibrant communities. As chief of community programs and partnerships for the San Francisco Public Library, Michelle Jeffers has developed key collaborations that change the lives of residents, and raise the visibility of the library as a welcoming place for all. So to you, Michelle, congratulations. Um, thank you, thank you, Nen. I'm so honored to receive this award. You know, at the library we share, so I really feel this award is for everybody at the library who makes everything come true, from learning how to do something new, teaching your child to read, to um, popping up a library inside one of our best cultural institutions, SFMOMA. I'm just really proud of the work that we do at the library, and I couldn't do it without the empowerment of my boss, Luis Herrera. <laughs> we, we've, he's created a real culture of yes for the library, and by him creating that culture, it allows me to say yes to all the many crazy and wonderful things that the Community Programs and Partnership team does. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. I'm sorry, I have to uh, steal a few minutes only because it's not about anybody else but Michelle. She really is an extraordinary leader. And, and let me just say that our library organization has been transformed. And it's been transformed because of what we call radical partnerships. That means working with the National Park Service. That means working with SF MoMA. Just last year alone, we had a record number of youngsters involved in summer learning, 26,000 folks, uh, because of her effort and her team's effort that really do extraordinary work day in, day out. Um, she, she doesn't know how to say no. 
She's tireless in her commitment to community, and everybody loves her, and we love her, and we really are so proud that she has been designated as the most empowering city employee. She wears that proudly, and thank you all for, for honoring her. And I hope that everyone here has a library card, and if you don't, I'll be signing you up in the back of the room. <laughs> Another round of applause, please, for Michelle. And Louise, Louise, time out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We have one of the world's greatest library systems in the world. Woohoo! Right here in San Francisco. My children are in your libraries every week. It, it is a huge part of our life. They're more excited about getting the books they reserved and checking them out themselves than anything else, except for uh, screen time. Um, but I, I will say this. You rarely meet a person with this amount of humility, class, and style who's accomplished so much. And I want to thank you for leaving a legacy behind in our city like you've done. Thank you, sir, very much. Thank you. So as we begin to move forward here on our opportunities, I want to take a moment and as we begin to enter into the next round of winners, which are for the Extraordinary NERT Leadership Award and the Exemplary Alert Leadership Award, is re remind everyone in this room that it's been an incredible year on many levels, and I think that we all need to remember what's transpired in the North Bay just a few months ago and the incredible activity uh, that happened with our first response community but also the incredible contribution that the residents of Sonoma County made to protecting the health and well-being of their neighbors and their community around them. And I need, we need to remember that there are a lot of people in San Francisco that have taken the time to participate in the NERT program and the ALERT program. And the honest truth is that it's a lot of work, but it's a work that bears incredible fruit because you know how important it is. And so as we enter the, the next round of awards, I want to personally salute the individuals and the leadership for the NERT program. My colleague and friend, uh, Eric Artiseros, Captain Eric Artiseros, and also my good friend, where is he, Mark Hernandez, and Captain uh, Commander David Lazar as well. And I want to thank you, all of you, for your incredible leadership. Thank you. Thank you so much, Daniel. Um, uh, so t tonight, Wonderful to see you. Maxine Fasula, Supervisor Sheehy joining us, Lieutenant Erica Arteceros. Um, hmm? My apologies. Captain Erica Arteceros. The San Francisco Fire Department's Neighborhood Emergency Response Team, or NERT, and the Police Department's Auxiliary Law Enforcement Response Team, AKA ALERT initiative. They've trained thousands of San Franciscans to play an integral role in the city's response to disasters and to provide leadership and support to their communities on a daily basis. Tonight's exemplary NERT Leadership Award salutes the hard work of Maxine Fasoulis, who demonstrates NERT leadership in Noe Valley. Maxine has been on the NERT Advisory Board, has been a, a NERT Advisory Board member since 2001 and volunteered with NERT for 20 years as a neighborhood coordinator. So tonight, we salute you. Thank you very much. I'd like to point out the award actually belongs to the Noe Valley NERT team. Two members right there, Carol Roberts and Susan Floor. Without them, the team would not be as great as it is. And of course, the advisory board members in the back, there's a few of them here. And of course, our captain who is fabulous, tireless, and irreplaceable. Thank you. Thank you so much. I noticed you, I noticed with Asha too, you were like not wanting to surrender the mic, you'll never get it back. So I'll keep it short. Uh, and I'm so proud to have, uh, and I'm Supervisor Jeff Sheehy from District 8. I'm so proud to have Maxine uh, from Noe Valley in my district. 
I have to tell you, I, I turned to her and I said, so I know that you've done tons of training. How many people have you trained? And I thought, 500, 1,000, 26,000 in the 20 years. 26,000. This is amazing. This is a great program. And this is the spirit of San Francisco where we all look out for each other. Thank you, Maxine. Another round of applause, please, for Noe Valley Nert. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Our next group is um, Exemplary Alert Leadership. And joining us uh, on the stage, um, uh, David Bolafi, Commander David Lazar, Mark Hernandez, and, and and dad, Andre Balafi, 85 years young and the oldest alert member. <laughs> I think our applause can be a little louder on that one. <laughs> David Balafi is one of the original members of the alert program. Because of his leadership and visionary approach to Alert's role in our city, David was appointed as Alert Liaison to the SFPD, the San Francisco Police Department Park Station, and invited to be a member of their Community Pol uh, Police Advisory Board. Congratulations on winning the Exemplary Alert Leadership Award. Thank you very much, and I am humbled and honored, and I just very briefly want to say thank you to Commander Lazar, our first commanding officer when he was a captain, now our commanding officer again as a commander. Our program coordinator, Mark Hernandez, retired SFPD sergeant. Without Mark running it, we wouldn't be here. My dad, as I said, and at 85, if dad can do it, stop by and dad and I will give you the short 30-second version as to what the alert program is all about. Um, I'd like to thank my sister Mimi. She flew down from Seattle last night. My mom, who's next to her. And just a shout out to my friend Carol, who will watch this um, when the video is released. Carol, AKA Tiger Bell in Atlanta. Thank you. I just want to say on behalf of our Chief of Police, Bill Scott, I want to thank Daniel and Joaquin for tonight's ceremony. And I want to congratulate David. I'm glad his father's up here. And retired Sergeant Mark Hernandez. You know, uh, we're all very grateful for all of you and everyone that volunteers and does work in the city to prepare our city for resilience. It's a not a matter of if, but when disaster strikes. In five years, we've got about 125 volunteers. We're gonna keep on pushing because we need everyone's help so that we can be prepared. And at last, I wanna thank Captain Erica Artiseros for the NERT program, because as you can see, we have seen their leadership and we have replicated it in the police department and we're so grateful for their partnership. So thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you, Sergeant Hernandez, for your leadership. Thank you so much, Commander, and congratulations again. Thank you. Yes, congratulations. And as you can tell, the NEN Awards has gotten bigger and hopefully better every year. Uh, but the bottom line is a lot goes in to making it a successful event. And we have some wonderful partner agencies and organizations that we work with. Uh, we have a fantastic suite of uh, partners that actually provide with, with meaningful support to make this event happen. We'd like to thank our friends at AT&T, Microsoft, PG&E, Sterling Bank, the Institute for Civic and Community Engagement from San Francisco State, of course, our friends at SF Safe, and last but not least, the Community Challenge Grant Program and Lenita Enriquez, who is one of our biggest partners on this. So thank you so much to all those folks. And the way you can show that is by making sure we eat all the amazing food they help pay for um, after this event. With that, I also want to thank our award partners. Many of them have already been mentioned already. NERT, the Public Works, San Francisco Department of Emergency Management, the ALERT program, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, led by my good friend Derek Brown, and the Invested Neighborhoods program that uh, Joaquin Toto's oversees, Reckon Park, and the Office of Economic Restored Development. I want to also acknowledge that my friend Debbie Raphael from the Department of Environment's over there, one of my favorite departments here in the city, and also Commissioner Steve Adams was here a second ago, who just was elected president of that com the Small Business Commission. We want to congratulate him on his success. So with that, we'll move to our next suite of awards, and they include the Most Inspiring Public Works Volunteer, the Youth, Na uh, Youth Neighborhood Leadership Award, 
and the Outstanding Neighborhood Watch Group. And First up is the most inspiring public works volunteer to David Overdorf, and, to, uh, and we're very happy to be joined by Captain Paul Yep. Um, and speaking tonight will be our commander, David Lazar. Thank you, right here. Okay, Joaquin's gonna hold the microphone because I don't have my glasses and I have to hold it out here, so thank you. The most inspiring Public Works Volunteer Award acknowledges the city and county of San Francisco volunteer who has consistently been a valued asset to the community as they work to build a cleaner, greener and safer community. Mr. Overdorf, who's standing here to my left, is the longest serving Adopt a Street member in Public Works history. In Public Works history. Yes. He first heard about the program from the Director of Public Works, the late Mayor Ed Lee. And I also want to add, has been a, a volunteer for many, many years. Uh, of the San Francisco Police Department serving on the Central Station Community Police Advisory Board and that's why I'm joined by C Captain Paul Yep of Central Station and I'm the former captain working with David on so many things. Thank you very much uh, Mr. Oberdorf and here you are. Well this is quite an honor. Thank you very much. This honor should go to every single employee of the Department of Public Works, Police Department, every other department. Uh, they should be honored because they honor the past of San Francisco and what San Francisco is today and set this tone for the future. Thanks again, all of you, and I look forward to another 20 years of working with the city. Thank you. David, on behalf of Central Police Station, I just want to thank you very much for being our partner. Your energy, your uh, dedication makes us a more efficient and a better police department. Thank you so much. And here's a certificate from Central Police Station. Thank you. Thank you, Captain, and congratulations. And thank you, Commander. Next, next is our Neighborhood Youth Leadership Award. And tonight we are joined by uh, Hernan Mahano, uh, Supervisor Malia Cohen's office, and Felix Andam. The Youth Neighborhood Leadership Award is presented to a young San Franciscan who has put in considerable work to strengthen our communities. Hernan Mahano has been a volunteer and intern for three years at the Visitation Valley Greenway through the group Build On and June Jordan High School. In Visitation Valley, he has worked tirelessly to help maintain the Visitation Valley Greenway and has mentored young children through his outdoor education program. Congratulations, Hernan. Uh, all right. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there, everyone is going to inundate you with awards and proclamations and certificates, but now's your moment to shine. Oh, all right. So, sorry, y'all. Um, I want to take this moment to appreciate, firstly, the one and only man above, God, uh, because I know without him, I can't do anything. I'm very thankful for this award, for this is... Uh, hard work. Even though it's something small, I know it's something big in the world. I do many small things to, uh, to do to help my community, but I know this is going to do something and inspire someone else. I'm very thankful for the group of Build On, for they are the ones who inspired me uh, to make changes in and out of the city. They are the ones who brought me into helping and loving Visitation Valley Greenway. I'm thankful for Fran and Jim whom are like my second mom and papa. They teach me uh, to be me wherever I am in nature. And I will say this small part in Spanish to my parents. Quiero agradecer mucho a mi mamá y mi papá por darme todo porque ellos son mi inspiración. Ellos me enseñan a ser fuerte para todo y ellos me dan este, me guían para salir la buena manera. Thank you. God bless. Felicidades, felicidades. I love those moments of silence that we have every once in a while up here. And everyone wonders if something is going wrong, but it's always going right. This is our Outstanding Neighborhood Watch Award. And tonight we are joined by Ray O'Connor, the Kansas Street Safe Association. Uh, again, the office of Supervisor Malia Cohen. Sophia, thank you for being here. 
and the executive director of SF Safe, Kyra Worthy. Thank you for being with us tonight. The SF Safe neighborhood watch groups are often started as a result of public safety issues. Once these safe groups are formed, members are empowered to take on other endeavors, such as beautification projects, eradicating graffiti, and getting trained as nerd volunteers. Ray O'Connor and the Kansas Street Safe Association have been a transformative force in the Petrero Hill neighborhood by leading organized neighborhood cleanups, representing the neighborhood at City Hall, and organizing tours with the local police station. From the city to you, we say congratulations. Thank you very much uh, for those words, but uh, I have to tell you, we've been around for 15 years, and of those 15 years, none of this could happen without the SAFE Association itself. So I want to call out Irina here and the new executive director, Akira. Thank you for shepherding us through this process. Um, we live in a small part of, of Petrero Hill that has this confluence of so many different city and state agencies that we have worked with over the years. I can't begin to tell you the number of people I'd like to thank to help us get things done. Not only the members of our association that are here tonight to celebrate this award, but I want to I want to thank our previous captain, Raj Vaswani, who helped us greatly deal with the. Uh, thank you. Uh, Raj is a wonderful man. Uh, he shepherded us through uh, welcoming Lyft in Lyft's hub right across into our neighborhood, which introduced 150 cars per day on our streets. And uh, that has worked out fairly well. And Malia Cohen, too, for coming to those meetings and coming to our meetings and being with us. Uh, we started a garden on, on uh, state property right off of Highway 101. And the, the state, Caltrans, was great in helping us do that. The Department of Public Works with Mohammed Nuru and Kelly Rudnick continued to work with us on that. Uh, we did street calming on our street with the MTA and the people from there. Uh, so much has happened, and I'm so appreciative of everyone that helps us keep our neighborhood strong. Thank you. Thank you, and congratulations again. And deep heartfelt thanks to SF Safe and all the partnerships that you create and the communities that you support to help make our neighborhoods thrive. So thank you. Congratulations. Absolutely. Congratulations, Kira, on your new uh, <laughs> responsibilities there. SF Safe is an important part of the NEN family. So when we look at uh, the Hall of Fame, every once in a while, we normally uh, induct one amazing person uh, into the Hall of Fame every year. And, uh, but this year, it was such a, a really poignant year. And we had, basically, we lost a, a lot of amazing people. Unfortunately, that's just what happens in, in great cities like San Francisco. But there was one voice that went quiet this year. And that was by um, the voice of Jeffrey Betcher um, and the Caseta Gardens Initiative. And, I met Jeffrey probably 10 years ago when I first started in this business. And the one thing about Jeffrey that I thought, you know, makes a difference, and we all have those relationships, like Mark Christensen is the one that breaks it down for me all the time about what it means to be a neighborhood leader. Um, then Mary Harris then comes around and says, let me tell you who's a real neighborhood leader. Um, but in the end, the bottom line is this, is that, you know, Jeffrey really explained to me how hard it is to be a neighborhood leader. And he really pointed out that everybody loves to come out and show up at the events and applaud and hold a shovel and put a plant in the ground. But if we really want to get the money to buy the next thousand plants, it's a kind of a lonely job. But you know what? Not only did he step up, but he took it to the next level. And he probably raised more money for his initiative outside of city funding than any other initiative I'd met in my work. And I just want to put out there that that's what leadership is all about. And tonight we're going to recognize him um, with the, the second inductee tonight into our Hall of Fame. And I hope you join me and take a, a, a few minutes and hear about his amazing work. Joaquin? Thank you, Daniel. 
This year we honor a second community leader whose contributions will be enjoyed for years to come, and he truly was committed. We welcome to the stage Elizabeth, Shane, and Roberto to receive the Neighborhood Empowerment Network Hall of Fame Award on Jeffrey's behalf. So can you, can, would you do us the honor of just saying a few words um, and telling us what made Jeffrey so special and committed to changing his community for the better for himself, his neighbors, and for all of San Francisco? Well, in a nutshell, <laughs> um, I was Jeffrey's colleague and co-editor of his blog surrounding Caseta Gardens Initiative and the Bayview Neighborhoods. Um, I feel barely adequate to even receive an award for him um, because truly Jeffrey Betcher spent, I'd say the last 15 years every day doing something for Caseta Gardens Initiative, doing something for the blog um, or our community newsletter, writing a grant, looking for a new grant and it was his life, it was his full-time job, and he transformed the face of the neighborhood. I met him in 2006 when I was a journalism student at San Francisco State University. I had the Bayview as my beat, and I found his name in a lot of articles about Bayview, and I went to try to get an interview from Jeffrey. But Jeffrey said, no, no, you don't want to interview me. Go interview James. He's done all this work with the Blue Dolphins swim team. And anyway, he sent me to interview all these different people. I never got to interview Jeffrey. So I don't really know the answer to the question why Jeffrey did this. All I know is I hold him as an example of somebody I would like to be like. Um, now I have his job at the blog and the newsletter, and I can barely fill half a shoe, but he, he was a in, truly inspiring person. He's the reason I moved to Bayview. I bought the house across the street from him after in, in 2009, so this story goes on. Um, he impressed me that much. He and the neighborhood impressed me that much that I actually made it my home. Um, and now we finally get to say things about Jeffrey. We finally get to, to say what a wonderful leader he was, how much he has done for our community. He never let us talk about him, never. So it's a sad reason, but it's nice to finally be able to share how much of an impact he's had on me and our community. And I'm gonna pass it over to Shane. He's the chairperson of Caseta Gardens Initiative. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Neighborhood Empowerment Network, for honoring Jeffrey. I um, had the honor of meeting him in 2002 when I moved on to the block that we have both lived on for the last 15 years. And we found ourselves in a sort of neglected corner of San Francisco that nobody really cared about. And uh, together, following the leadership of Annette Smith and Carl Page, who, who took this neglected piece of land and started planting flowers and vegetables in it, and um, really transformed this blighted street into uh, an oasis in the in the city and Jeffrey saw this work that was happening in the garden and and had a vision of turning it into something even bigger than what was happening on our block which was which was very transformational and uh, he had the idea of of creating a nonprofit based around the the work that they were doing and I stood in as strong as opposition as I could to that idea with Jeffrey. <laughs> I really, really wanted to keep it just a, a group of neighbors working together, enjoying each other's company. And Jeffrey was really determined to make something bigger out of it. And I'm, I'm glad it, it took about six months for him to win that battle. And uh, I'm really glad that he finally did. 
and he took the work that was happening on our street and turned it into about 10 other community gardens in the neighborhood, raised many thousands of dollars that he was able to, you know, pull into the, into the neighborhood and really turned our street from this neglected, blighted street in a, um, you know, in a rough part of town to a destination where people came from all over the world, actually, to see our garden and see the, um, see the grassroots community building that Jeffrey was the center of. So, uh, congratulations, Jeffrey. Not only did you get the nonprofit, but now I'm the chair of the organization. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Roberto Vargas, and I'd like to thank Joaquin and, and Daniel for uh, hosting uh, this gathering in order to be able to recognize folks contributing so much to San Francisco. I'm happy to be a part of this group sharing in Jeffrey's memory. Um, my family moved to the Bayview in 1946, and, um, and then I later moved there uh, as a teenager and you know, developed a love for this community that was very diverse. And uh, as with uh, changes we see in communities um, like the changing demographics in the Bayview, um, it often becomes challenging to identify ways that we can build bridges between communities, between uh, long-term residents, newly arrived residents. And what I admired about Jeffrey is that uh, he took the opportunity to try to find ways that he could build a bridge as a, new, uh, a newcomer, uh, as a white man, as someone able to purchase property in the Bayview. Uh, he saw an opportunity to build community between long-term African-American residents there in the Bayview, uh, Latino residents, Asian residents, and he helped me understand this uh, idea of social cohesion as a way of improving health. My work in the Bayview, I've, I've lived in the Bayview uh, when Jeffrey was around the corner from me there on Quesada, uh, but my work is around improving health in the Bayview on behalf of UCSF. And what Jeffrey helped taught me is that a garden is not only health by providing um, food, fresh produce, for example, for the elders, they would donate food from the uh, Bridgeview Garden, um, but also in building social cohesion and community and seeing that as an opportunity to build the health of community by bringing people together. So I'm very thankful for Jeffrey for that and all the work he did for Bayview by way of gardening and building community. Thank you, Jeffrey, and thank you for all of you for recognizing Jeffrey. Good night. Thank you very much for those amazing remarks. Thank you, thank you for helping us recognize Jeffrey's life and his legacy. Thank you Amen. so much. Amen. Thank you. So we have uh, an incredibly crowded uh, rotunda tonight, and one of the reasons why is since it was our 10th year, we thought we'd invite back all the past winners of NEN Awards, and obviously we only have a little more time, and, and, and Al's hungry. I know Al, we're gonna get to the reception, right? Um, but I would like to take a moment and ask anyone in this room who has been associated with the past NEN Award, just take a minute and stand so we give them a round of applause. So everyone stand up, let them see the family. This is probably one of the most exciting things about our program, We've literally hundreds of winners to date. Thank you all so very much. Incidentally, uh, right now, half the homes in District 11 probably doesn't have anyone in them. So just, you know, get those neighborhood watches going. Keep an eye on those houses. Um, with that, I want to yield back to my uh, esteemed colleague, Joaquin Torres, as we begin to introduce the Outstanding Park Volunteer Group and the Best Merchant Association CBD Award. Thank you so much, Daniel. Tonight we're joined by Jimmy, Casey, Philip, Justin. Am I missing anyone? With the what? Oh, with the Recreation and Parks Department. Let's hear it for the Recreation and Parks Department. <laughs> the Outstanding Volunteer Group Award represents volunteer groups that are instrumental to the success of the city to provide clean, safe, and fun parks to the public. 
The Mission Continues is a nonprofit that empowers veterans who are adjusting to life at home to find purpose through community impact. The local chapter called San Francisco First Service Platoon is dedicated to protecting and enriching local and national parks, making them relevant and accessible for all communities. To accept um, and speak on the organization's behalf uh, is Jimmy. Thank you. <clears throat> a round of applause, please. Uh, thanks. The Mission Continues is a veteran service organization that powers veterans to give back to their community in varying ways. Um, on the stage, I have Casey Wildrup. He's the Oakland Service Platoon Leader. Uh, <laughs> Justin Chu, he's been a longtime uh, volunteer with our group. And um, Greg Hatfield accepting this on behalf of our previous San Francisco Platoon Leader, Phil Patfield, who can join us tonight. Uh, I quickly want to say thanks to David. He's from the San Francisco Parks Rex Department. I've been working there for the past year, and he's been fantastic in getting us plugged into uh, varying parks around the city. So I thank you all very much, and we'll see you in the parks. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm good. Our next award is for the best merchant association or community benefit district. And I'm going to ask Lee Hepner to read the language that I have over here. You want to join me over here real quick? Um, Lee, tell us where you're from. <laughs> My name is Lee Hepner. I'm from Supervisor Aaron Peskin's office. Uh, he is the Supervisor's District 3, where the uh, large majority of the Lower Polk CBD exists. And I, it is my honor to be here tonight. I am not Supervisor Peskin, but I work most directly with the CBD in our office. So I know all of these people up here on the stage. They are more than public servants. They are, they've become my friends, truly. And I, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And City partners know that this CBD really is the best CBD in the city. And that is for so many reasons. They do what they're supposed to do. They clean our sidewalks. They have a rich ambassador program that does outreach to housed and unhoused neighbors in this part of the city. And really, beyond the bare minimum, they do so much more. I mean, they exist on the boundary of District 3 and District 6 in a historically underserved part of town. And where community was lacking, they have really gone above and beyond to build it. Whether it's at Sergeant Macaulay Park, working with local stakeholders, at Lavos Latina, at the SRO Collaborative to improve the safety and accessibility of that park. Um, whether it's at the Hemlock Alley, uh, the mural project, 36 30 foot murals in that area that brought with it food, an, an amazing party, activating the alleyways in that um, a traditionally less safe part of town. Um, you guys have done so much more. You do more than benefit community, you create community. And for that, I, I thank you. You make my job so much easier on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I know that folks in the Department of Homeless Services, uh, Public Works, Chris Corgus knows this, this CBD rocks. So Christian Martin, Chris Schulman, Al Casiato, Kevin Thomason, Kimberly Hartwig Schulman, uh, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lee. The, the, the script is great, but Lee Impromptu is fantastic, so thank you. And speaking on behalf of the CBD is Christian. Thank you very much, Joaquin. Thank you, Lee, for those kind words. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, my staff and board that is up here with me right now. Um, Kim, Kevin, Al, and Chris. Without you, I, I couldn't do anything. So I really appreciate that. I'd like to thank... Uh, the late Shell Thomas for his work building the foundation for the CBD upon which we uh, aim to build uh, a model CBD. So we're very thankful for, for him. Um, I'd like to thank our ambassadors who aren't here, but they do the, the real dirty work of cleaning up tons of trash, feces, needles, you know, the real nasty stuff um, that keeps you know, our community clean and safe. So I'd like to thank them uh, in, in absentia. So, thank you. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. I'm sorry. Go for it. Go for it. Sorry. It's your time. This is my time. I'm going to yeah. take it. So, I'd like to thank uh, Andrea Michaels, the pizza lady who nominated us. Apparently, you said some really nice things because we're up here. Andrea actually volunteers in our neighborhood saving pizza that is destined for the compost bin and redistributed redistributes it to people in need. So it's, it's people like her that really inspire people like us. And we would 
uh, be remiss if we didn't thank her. So, all right. Thank you so much, Christian, and congratulations again. And as Lee said, we really couldn't do it without you, so thank you so much for all of your hard work and contributions. A round of applause, please. Yay. I'm sorry, one more thing. He wants to do more. We, we really couldn't do anything without the generous support of Supervisor Peskin's office, Lee, Beth, Sunny, um, OEWD, Chris, everybody I see you out there, um, Mohammed, and everybody at DPW. It's a real public-private partnership. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Congratulations. So in addition to receiving uh, their award tonight, uh, tonight's winners also receive a certificates of recognition and proclamations from a variety of um, agencies. And so we'd like to thank, of course, the City and County of San Francisco, the Board of Supervisors, the Office of Mayor Mark Farrell, the State Board of Equalization, uh, the Assessor Carmen Chu, um, our Assembly members Phil Ting and David Chu, um, the State Senator Scott Weiner, and uh, Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi. So just want to let you know that they're receiving recognition at all levels of government uh, this evening. And with that, I turn it back over to my colleagues. Oh, who's up? Who's that? Hey, hey, how's it going? It's the man. How's Dan everybody Brown. doing this evening? All right. Let's give Daniel another hand. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> Let's give Derek's tie a hand. Derek Excellent. Brown, ladies and gentlemen, director of the uh, Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Yes. So Derek Brown, director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, and it is truly an honor to be here today to recognize one of the best awards of the evening, and that is Comeback Neighborhood of the Year. Let's give Dogpatch a hand. Excellent. excellent, excellent, excellent. So at this point, I would like to give the mic to Bruce Huey. You want to say some words, Bruce? Come on, come on down. All right. Let's give it up for Bruce. Um, I'm joined by my neighbors. Um, thank you for the opportunity to accept this award on behalf of my Dogpatch neighbors. Um, Dogpatch has evolved almost constantly during the 170 year modern history. Today, longtime neighbors like Susan and myself, as well as Vanessa, are looking at vast changes in commercial uses and a population that will increase four to five fold by 2025. Managing that change, bending to our purpose, evolving the character of the district without erasing it is required diligence, optimism, and the cooperation of many, including the Dogpatch Neighborhood Association, of which we're all part of. Dogpatch has been helped by Supervisor Malia Cohen and her staff, our Tennessee Street neighbor, City Attorney Dennis Herrera, Assessor Chu and her staff, DPW with Kelly Rudnick, HSH Homeless and Supportive Housing with Emily Cohen, Planning with Matt Snyder and Robin Abad, MTA with Adrian Hem, Hank Wilson and Kathy Studwell, and OEWD with Sarah Janice Phillips and John Lau. And last but not least, our, the San Francisco Police Department with uh, Steve Ford has been a tremendous uh, addition to our neighborhood. DNA shares the credit for the neighborhood success with um, the new property owner funded Green Benefit District um, proposed by neighbors and Build Public, now Place Lab, with Michael Yarney, and today represented by Julie Christian as the Executive Director. Julie, you, do you want to say a few words? No, I don't. All right. Back to you. Thank you, Bruce. So, thank you. And the Dog Patch has been doing incredible things, but without an incredible supervisor like Malia Cohen, none of it has been done. But at this point, Sophia, would you like to say some words from Malia Cohen's office? Um, just really quickly, I think we should acknowledge that D10 has cleaned up this evening. Uh, but I, I think that it is a testament to all of the D10 awardees, and particularly the Dogpatch Neighborhood Association, but Tunnel Tup, Anan, Jeffrey, um, I'm forgetting somebody important. Oh, Kansas Street Neighbors, of course. Everybody is such, they build such community. Um, they have, you know, under, I wouldn't call it constant attack, but with the building of you know, Chase Stadium and Pier 70 and the Petrero Power Plant and the Lift Hub. There is just constant change in the neighborhood and it just brings everyone closer and closer together. And um, we couldn't be prouder to work with them. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe Joaquin will return and 
Yes, Daniel. Yes, Joaquin. Yes. Yes. Yes, Daniel. <laughs> no. Are we going to maybe let's acknowledge the incredible folks that did the Community Challenge Grant project? I believe the Tunnel Top project is that an what an amazing don't you all agree that was an amazing project? <laughs> Perhaps uh, Joaquin, can you uh, ask them some questions about it and give them a lovely thing? Absolutely, oh, Daniel. Absolutely, <laughs> ask and it is ask and it is given. Uh, the Community Challenge Grant has been funding many community designed and implemented projects in San Francisco for years and has played a vital role in helping build stronger neighborhoods. Transforming under an underutilized corner lot located above a Caltrain tunnel on Potrero Hill at 25th and Pennsylvania has offered new open space, active recreation area for children, and a safe social gathering space. On behalf of the organization Bonnie Bergeron, Tunnel Top Park, the Office of Supervisor Malia Cohen, Lenina Enriquez, who is, uh, is not here with us tonight, but it's not possible unless that partnership exists. So on behalf of the city, congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Um, well, for those of us that don't know where Tunnel Top Park is, we are at the southeastern side of Potrero Hill, literally a block away from uh, Cesar Chavez. Um, when we first started, it was literally just solid rock, serpentine, and a few weeds and a lot of trash. A lot of trash. The number one species there was actually broken glass. Um, but thanks to hard work and a lot of these amazing people, especially Bonnie, that got us all together and excited about it, um, now, it's not just a neighborhood space, but also we have a lot of wildlife coming back. This used to be just rock. Now we have lizards, snakes, salamanders, migratory birds, and hawks and hummingbirds. It's amazing. I wish you could all come. Please visit. Um, we're going to be throwing some events, and it would be great to see new fresh faces there. Um, I want to give a special thank you to Lanita Enriquez. Um, I don't know where she is. I can see her. <laughs> and, uh, of course, uh, SF Parks Alliance, uh, the Department of Public Works, the Department of the Environment for the, uh, the Carbon Fund Grant, and, of course, uh, PUC, and uh, our angel, uh, Robin Abad. I'm not sure if he's here. Um, and, of course, the neighborhood associations uh, that really helped us, the Dog Patch Neighborhood Association helped us, Potato Boosters, 25th Street Neighborhood Association, and uh, of course, countless volunteers, businesses, artists, and uh, well, am I missing anybody? There's a lot of people to thank. <laughs> thank you for this award. It's an honor to have been a part of working on Tunnel Top Park, and it's an honor to have worked with everybody here, and I just want to do a quick introduction. So, Angel Garcia who has led the charge in our habitat garden with all of our plants, laid it out like a banquet, and it's beautiful, the way the colors ripple through seasonally throughout the space. Dennis Montelto, Lalitha Bartolet, Gotham Bartolet, Olivia Simpson, Kyle Mooney, and our great area managers from Parks Alliance. We have Marisa Alexander, and we have Mai Aguar. Um, also, I just wanna say, it's, an, it's, it's a true honor when you're able to transform a space because in turn you become transformed. And I think everybody can speak to that, but especially Gotham who started out with us when he was six. And so he got to come down there and watch the site when all the heavy machinery was coming and he would just hang out and watch it. And then he got to watch it as it continued to transform and then he'd bring his friends there. So he's grown up with the park and that's, that's a gift, it's a blessing, and thank you for this gift of this honor. Thank you so much, and congratulations. Absolutely, and again, a huge thank you to Lenita Nikas from the Community Challenge Grant Program and our colleagues at the Parks Alliance. Um, so when I came to City Hall uh, many a moon ago, I, one of the neighborhoods that I was um, charged with engaging was District 5. And the truth is, is my family uh, moved 
to District 5, the Western Edition, in the late 1800s. And so it's actually the, the, the home neighborhood for my family. And so as I went out, I began to look around the neighborhood, and I, I found this amazing park called Koshland Park uh, up on this hill. I never knew it existed. And the bottom line was that we, um, I began to poke around and find out what was going on there, and I bumped into this amazing woman who was overseeing this uh, after-school program uh, and getting kids to work in the gardens. And I got to tell you, I was totally inspired uh, by her work. Um, of course, I'm introducing Barbara Wenger, who's about to receive the Lifetime Achievement Award. And uh, it really was, again, like a Jeffrey Betcher uh, opportunity to see someone who really left a lot of her heart every day um, out there against her mission because of her passion to help the children. And so the Lifetime Achievement Award inductee this year is Barbara Wenger, well-deserved. And with that, um, I yield to Joaquin. Thank you, Daniel. Our neighborhoods are teeming with resident leaders who have been making a difference in the lives of those around them for years. And this year, we recognize the leadership of Barbara Wenger as a recipient of the Neighborhood Empowerment Network Lifetime Achievement Award. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for staying to the very end. Um, I feel like we are a choir together that has lifted up the city and uh, we're speaking to each other and I really appreciate so much all the work you do. <clears throat> and because I have a lifetime of working with so many great groups, um, I want to just spend a few minutes with you and then it will be over and we could have something great to eat. So just out of high school, I naively believed that I could single-handedly end apartheid. Little did I know. It then became my passion to learn about the African-American community and lift them up. So when I moved to San Francisco in 1973, I had this opportunity. My neighborhood experienced arson fires, which burned down much of the Fillmore District and left abandoned lots as sore reminders of a broken city. Thanks to a group of over 200 residents, many from nearby housing developments, as well as the Trust for Public Land and the Daniel Koshlin family, a burned out space across from my house was transformed into Koshland Park. This park honors Daniel Koshland Sr., who is a distinguished philanthropist, civic leader, and guiding entrepreneur of Levi Strauss. This park is on the corner of Page and Buchanan Streets. Although Koshland Park, completed in 1976, was the first new park to be built in 15 years, it had many challenges. The demise of the neighborhood organization in the 80s, the deterioration of the housing development, and the 1989 earthquake, which brought homelessness, crime, and prostitution, they all threatened to destroy this open space. Many of you may not know this, but in 1990, the state of California issued a five-year mandate to, to nine transitional neighborhoods in San Francisco to study substance abuse. The program called NIT-AMP, which stands for Neighborhoods in Transition, a multicultural partnership, was a catalyst for transforming, transforming Hayes Valley just think about that. A first meeting at John Muir Elementary School in 1994 brought residents together to identify five areas, crime, prostitution, parks, youth, and drugs. Out of that meeting came the revitalization of the neighborhood and the emergence of many community leaders that meeting led to three ballot measures to tear down the central freeway, 
to the creation of John's prostitution program and to the renovation of four public parks and many more accomplishments. This period was a crisis time. We didn't know what we were doing, but we knew we had to do something. We faced many obstacles and roadblocks, challenges that educated us on how to get things done with one setback after another. Plowing through was our motto. Persist was our mode of operation. In 1995, our group, called the Hayes Valley Neighborhood Parks Group, had a Take Back Your Park Day in Caution Park with Willie Brown, Roberta Actenberg, and Frank Jordan, who are all running for mayor. Over 300 people joined them for a barbecue, concert, and carnival to kick off the renovation of the park. Working with Slug and my longtime friend Mohammed Nuru, we built a learning garden in Koshland Park and also a garden in the Rose Page Mini Park, both with the help of lieutenants and officers from Northern Police Station and the wonderful Recreation and Park Department. We raised funds for the renovation of Hayes Valley Clubhouse and helped to plan the creation of Patricia's Green in Octavia Boulevard. During that period of renovation, we attended many meetings in City Hall with Bevan Dufty and later on Daniel Holmesy to ensure the participation and voice of the community. We also had many workshops and cleanup days and work days with Ed Lee and his crew from Public Works. To complete the renovation of Koshland Park, we created a peace wall project, which took seven years and helped and the help of community challenge grants, the San Francisco Foundation and the Koshland family. It, evolved over 20, it involved over 25 youth-serving agencies and schools in the Western Edition and many Juneteenth festivals. Section 8 residents were trained and joined a team to teach a peace empowerment process in month-long visits to Sacred Heart and John Muir Elementary Schools. Each week, the kids drew pictures of different emotions, fear, anger, doubt, disappointment, and then talked about their feelings. On their final day, youth painted tiles of what peace means to them. The project, which collected over 2,000 tiles from the community, was interspersed with tiles from an award-winning artist, Justine Tatarski. Dedicated in June of 1997, the Peace Wall at Koshland Park is a testament to the community that created it. When the parks are renovated, we changed our name to Community Grows and focused on the gardens to teach environmental education to the youth in the neighborhood. We also joined a new collaborative called Mo Magic, then organized by Cheryl Davis, composed of many youth serving agencies and organizations. We also got invited by London Breed to join the family at the African American Arts and Culture Complex, a great honor for us. This is where our offices are today. Today, the challenges at Community Grows are different and our work is more critical than ever. With a staff of dedicated environmental educators, we serve over 1,300 kids a year with daily classes at John Muir and Rosa Parks Elementary School and with after school and summer programs in the Western Edition, the Bayview, and the Outer Mission neighborhoods. We teach environmental education as well as healthy, nutritious cooking, and we have a work-based learning program the Beats, a band of environmentally educated and employable teens. We are struggling to continue our good work 
as are many other important environmental education groups throughout the city. Please pay attention to us and continue to support us. We are getting our hands dirty for a reason. Little buds are growing. Flowers are blooming where none have bloomed before. This is a revolution which we hope can still heal the world. It begins with us and our future leaders. For all the people who have lifted us up over these years, we thank you so much. And as Dr. Seuss said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Thanks very much. I also want to say that I have just retired from Community Grows and I had a fantastic end of celebration of life and all my friends and community members came and I didn't want to tell them about this award. So a lot of them found out anyway and they don't want to come up on stage with me but this is my replacement as the executive director of Community Grows and uh, Kelly, where, oh there she is, Kelly Erds Friedman. Okay, thank you very much. It's, it, it's a very special night tonight because um, uh, there was a visionary who started this program and dreamt of this program. And unfortunately, he's no, no longer with us. But in order to realize his vision, um, he needed to have an implementer and a team behind him to make sure that this vision could be realized and that all of you could benefit and enjoy it. Um, and uh, we all know that we so much appreciate the work that Daniel Holmesy has done uh, to make sure that this event um, and our neighborhoods can be celebrated. So please, let's give Daniel Holmesy a great big round of applause. Daniel, if you could, if you could come, on, uh, come on up here for, for a moment. We, we wanted to make sure that this moment, this 10th annual Neighborhood Empowerment Network Award Ceremony could be properly recognized. And so tonight we have two state representatives from the offices of our state senator, Scott Weiner and our assemblyman, David Chu, uh, here with us tonight to present Daniel on behalf of the Neighborhood Empowerment Network and really in support of all of you. Um, with a wonderful, very large, well-framed proclamation. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for staying till the very, very end. I know we're keeping you from some good food and drinks, so we'll try to be brief. My name is Victor Ruiz Cornejo, and I'm with Senator Scott Wiener's office. This is Genesis Garcia with Assemblymember David Chu's office. Assemblymember Phil Ting's office couldn't be here, but is also on the award as well. And we want to congratulate all of the awardees for the important work that you all do. Our bosses have the great privilege of writing policy that we hope and we cross our fingers will have an impact. But what we know about all of the work that you all do and all of the work that you engage in every day is that it has direct measurable impact in your communities. We see that. And it's because of the Neighborhood Empowerment Network. So Daniel, thank you so much for all of your leadership on this. And it's our honor to be here to represent this. Thank you so much. And, and D Daniel, I'd be very happy to hold the mic for you. Uh, yes, thank you. Don't let go. Uh, BYOM, right? Bring your own mic. So thank you very much. It's an honor to receive this. And there are so many people, so many interns, so many folks that have gone in to making this a reality. And I want to thank all the members of the Neighborhood Empowerment Network uh, that have made this program a reality. And we'll have, hopefully have a bigger, better year this year. Um, as I close this out, I want to do something I've never been able to do at the NEN Awards. And I've done a lot, but I've never been able to do this. I'd like to invite my lovely wife, Catherine Holmesy, and my two lovely children, Ajaxio and Violet, to join me on stage. Yay! So, because all of you, many of you are my dear and closest friends, um, this is the woman that you can thank, lets me come to your meetings, stay too long talking to everybody, showing up on Saturday and sometimes Sunday, 
uh, to be there with you. And it is her generosity that allows me to be there for you. So I want to thank her publicly for being the best friend and partner a guy could have. And this is the first time they could both come out and stay up this late, and they weren't alive when I started this, which is even more amazing, right? So I'm getting shorter and they're getting taller, and I want to thank my children too, because they also sacrificed uh, the time that we have together so I can uh, be there with you, and I want to thank them publicly for being, letting me do that. And now is coming out to all the block parties, and hopefully Vi will be out there too. So just want to let you know we're building the next generation uh, of NEN leadership. And as we close out this year, there's one other guy, Trey Allen. Come up here, Trey. Come on. Everyone's very confused who this person is, so we're going to demystify him. Trey, who goes by Russell, and all of you receive multiple easels from him. This guy right here is why this event happened this year. I want to thank you, friend. You're much more than someone who comes in and punches the clot. This, guy, this heart in here is the heart of a champion, and I want to thank you very much for making this happen this year, my friend. Thank you very much. And I'm already reading his mind. He says, we have food to eat, folks. So with that, please join the reception. Thank you very much for joining us this year. And we'll see you next year for the 11th Annual NEN Awards. Thank you so much.